It's now just under a month before players can get their hands on the full release of Battlefield 5. And this week we've got yet more information on the game and this time around it's to do with specialisations, both for vehicles and weapons. DICE and EA have released a blog that details exactly what we can do with our vehicles and weapons and how these specialisations could change up the way that you play the game. So today we're going to start with vehicles because there's a load of new info here and thanks to a previous blog we now know of all of the vehicles that we can play with in BF5. There are 24 in total at launch, split between tanks of course which there are small, medium and large, transport vehicles and airplanes. First up, specializations are unlocked with an in-game currency called Company Coin. How do you get this? Well, simply by playing the game. The specializations can then be used to either enhance the defensive or offensive abilities of your chosen vehicle. DICE are claiming that the amount of gameplay altering choices you can make when it comes to vehicle specializations and the impact they will have is unrivaled in any other Battlefield game. The theory here is that you can choose these specializations based on either your gameplay preference or the situation that you're in. Perhaps you're an attacking tanker and you would rather have more offensive capabilities or maybe you prefer to sit back and would rather play more defensive. The idea is that you can decide how you want to play and what benefits you get on your vehicle. What DICE are keen to make players aware of though is that specializations are not going to make you some sort of vehicle god. Every vehicle and especially the tanks have advantages and disadvantages. For instance the smaller tanks are very fast and their turrets can move much faster than the heavy tanks which in turn are slow but can of course absorb far more damage and have more armour. The specialisations are not going to change that natural order of things as they're made with balance in mind. If you're in a light tank and you go in all guns blazing then you stand a good chance that one well organised squad could take you down easily regardless of your loadout. So each vehicle has its own specialization tree, much like the one that you've probably already seen for each weapon. The example we're given is that of the Panzer IV. This is a medium German tank and a very well-known tank from World War II. The specialization tree has three columns. In the left-hand column, you've got smoke launchers, armored skirts, pack 40 L43 and armor piercing rounds. The smoke launcher will put a multi-barreled smoke grenade launcher on either side of your turret. With this equipped you can actually launch smoke grenades in the direction that your turret is facing. And this can easily be used as both a defensive option as a driver but also to help squad mates or teammates to push an objective. Especially now that smoke grenades are tied to the server so all players should see more or less the same thing. Finally a battlefield game where smoke grenades will be useful. Armoured skirts on the other hand give your tank a little bit more protection on the tracks, something which is pretty important in Battlefield 5 because the damage system is changed up a little bit and damaged tracks can severely limit your movement. The Pack 40 l 43 replaces the default tank gun with the long barreled Pack l 40 this has a reduced rate of fire but it gives you a better muzzle velocity so it's going to help you out at range. If you sit back and fire off rounds from a distance then maybe this would be useful to you. And then lastly the armour piercing rounds give you a limited quantity shell that has increased damage against other armoured targets. You might notice that this entire tree is more catered towards taking on and surviving against other tanks. The middle column only has two specialisations, they are field repair and case round. Field repair is a bit like the emergency repair in BF1. This lets you instantly fix damaged tracks, engines and turrets and this will replace your default emergency repair. The case rounds are shrapnel shells designed for close range infantry combat. Then we have the right hand column which has another four specialisations and these are more catered towards setting your tank up as an anti-infantry machine. Just to be clear though, you could in theory fully deck your tank out with either the left hand column or the right hand one but you can also mix and match with detours across if you wanted a bit of a mix of both. So on this column you get the Zimmerit paste, the flare launcher, the improved turret transverse and the S mine launcher. The Zimmerit paste well this covers your tank in paste and this serves an important function. It makes it impossible for grenades and mines to stick to the hull. Probably very useful when getting up close and personal with infantry on a city map. The flare launcher is turret mounted just like the smoke grenades that we talked about earlier and it also replaces the default smoke generator. 
It will fire off flares that can spot for a limited time and the improved turret transverse will give you a faster turret rotation thanks to improved motors and the S mine launcher equips you with a launcher that can fling out mines in a 360 degree pattern around your tank mainly to help defend yourself against infantry that would want to do you harm with let's say dynamite. So this is the first time that we've seen the vehicle specialization. So it's interesting to see what sort of options are available. And of course, this is just for one tank, but you can see how varied each side of the tree is. And it very much depends on how you want to play. Going back to the Panzer example, you could choose between the smoke launcher or the Zimmerit paste, depending on how close you plan on getting to your enemies. Maybe you continue down that path and pick the armoured skirts or perhaps instead you would rather have the flare option instead. Interestingly the pack 40 is a required option if you want the armour piercing rounds. Lots of options available to you though and if you're not happy with what you've chosen you can respec your vehicle. When it comes to weapon specialisations, we already had a good look at this during the beta, but let's take another look anyways, this time at the EMP specifically. When it comes to weapon specialisations, DICE want all weapons to still remain balanced, and they want to ensure that new players aren't penalised for not having the so-called best specialisations unlocked. The idea here is the same as the vehicle specialisations and you can go back afterwards and respec if the path that you chose is perhaps not really the one that you wanted in practice. Also to ensure that new players definitely aren't at a disadvantage, the starter weapons for each class will have specialisations unlocked from the get go to try and counter that. Your weapons will still be at rank 0 though but at rank 4 you can go in and respec the weapons to how you want them. And there was a little tidbit in the DICE blog here talking about BF5's specialisation system compared to previous games like BF4 and BF3. And I do agree with them when they say that BF4, for example, there really was maybe two or three optimal configurations of weapons and most players would have used the same foregrip and other attachments anyway. So what it looks like they're going for here is a quality over quantity approach. That's the order of the day with weapon specializations in BF5. And DICE have separated the vanity aspect from the gameplay aspect. And that means that in BF5, you can have a fully specced weapon that is not tied to a certain visual look or style. Now then, back to the EMP. The EMP has eight specializations to choose from, split between two columns. The left hand side mainly caters for close range situations and to be clear, not every specialization is a pure upgrade. Some do have downsides too. The four specializations on the left are as follows. Slings and swivels allows you to swap to your EMP or sidearm faster. 0.65 seconds instead of 0.75, not much. You can also shoot sooner after sprinting. Enhanced grips improves your base accuracy when hip firing. That's 25% less hip fire related spread and 33% better range. Certainly not to be sniffed at. The polished action decreases hip fire accuracy and makes your weapon stay more accurate for longer. The inaccuracy amount you get is actually around 40%. And lastly, recoil buffer reduces vertical recoil by 20% and the right hand side of the tree caters towards aimed fire when you're aiming down the sight. So quick aim lets you zoom in faster when trying to aim down the sight. That's 133 millisecond ADS time instead of 200 millisecond. That's quite an improvement actually. Custom stock reduces spread by 33% when moving and aiming down the sights. Light and stock lets you move faster when aiming, meaning you'll move 60% faster when aiming down the sight. And lastly, barrel bedding reduces spread by 75% for aim down the sight. So for the EMP here, there are really two distinct paths depending on how you want to play. But just like with the vehicle specializations, you can cross over at certain points if you want a blend of either side. And there will be downsides to the specializations too. So you're not just straight upgrading your weapon with this. But what do you guys think about the specialization system overall for vehicles and weapons? Are you happy with it? Do certain ones need more of a negative aspect? I think there are definitely some interesting ones in there, especially for vehicles, and I'm really interested to try out different options when the game releases. And that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this one. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't like it, dislike it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one.